How's it going, people? Hope you're well. Welcome back to the show. Me and Lee Judges thought we'd do a stream tonight with the old transfer deadline day, or as Arsenal would like to call it, Thursday. Uh, we brought Billy on with us, who's an Aston Villa fan. Um, how you doing, Billy? Yeah, not too bad, Tom, mate. I don't suppose I'm quite as good as you boys after yesterday, but um, yeah, I'm plodding along. <laughs> plodding along indeed, mate. Um, Lee, how you feel, bro? Let down, mate. Let down after a great start to the season. Uh, five wins out of five. Can't ask no more from the players and the manager. Let down today. Let down by uh, poor management, really. We've known for how long now? Six, eight months, maybe even longer. That party can't last the season. We knew that. Not replaced him. Not, not look to get somebody in. Not look to cover it. Whether the manager and uh, uh, the ball felt that El Nenny was that person. That's fair enough. If that's what they feel they're on their heads being, if it didn't work, now I'm, I'm getting reports that he's out till after the World Cup. Um, so that's why we've we, we've we've gone in a bit desperate. Like you know, fact of the matter is, the the the, the, the two players that we're looking at, Tillemans and uh, Douglas Louise, the clubs don't want to sell them. Um, and then on the top of that, I'm, I'm seeing Maitland-Niles who can cover us in midfield. Um, he being let go. I've seen uh, Pepe let go um, when we need someone in the wide area. I, I just think it's been an absolute car carnage at the end of the back end of this transfer window, Dan. It's been been carnage. It's been a shambles. Very, very similar to what happened last season at, um, in January. Um, and... All of a sudden, um, you know, we all went and, and capitulated on us. And the same people are saying, oh, wait, wait till the transfer window ends, you know. 25 minutes. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the same people are saying who were believing in this and everything like that are now... Um, quiet. We're just we're putting the scene up. Yeah, but a little bit quiet, yeah. Or saying on the chat, oh, yeah, we're a little bit disappointed. The fact of the matter is, we've got we're we're Granite Shacker away from catastrophe if he gets injured or anything like that. You know, we're looking at it now our midfield. Uh, you know, um, Udegaard's probably looks like he's going to be out for the weekend. Um, Rams we look, maybe. Down. Yeah, he's a big doubt. Um, the Conger and Shacker, yeah, I've got no problems with them two in there, but that means they've got to play uh, a lot more games. The fact of the matter is, Dan, we've got a smaller squad now. <laughs> oh, no, than what bad. we had last season and we've got more games work that out so I think it's been an absolute shambles really like you know some good signings to start off with uh, Marquinhos now has got to, got to come good because he's going to be the cover on the right hand side of uh, of it there but I think Vieira's got to come into his own now as well wherever he's going to play I don't really know where he's going to play but he's going to have to uh, step up now and I, I just think that if I'm Mikel Arteta today, I, I, hope, I hope he's not feeling like I am because I think he's done everything that he can in the last uh, five games to get us in this position. And the lack of funds or the lack of whatever. I look around at other teams and they're strengthened. I've seen midfield players, Paqueta and Basuma, go, go to other clubs that w w would have been good for us. I'm just disappointed really because it, it looked like it was going to be really, really good and it looked like it was going to be a good um, a summer. But uh, I did say before any what, what happened, Dan, if I didn't sign anybody, I would be disappointed. And, you know, I didn't think that they'd do it again like they'd done. I, I really didn't, like, you know. And, you know, again, it's not, it, it's put the, the positive, um, the positive army of the Arsenal fans are, are all saying, oh, let, let, let's see what happens and everything like that. And I get that. But um, but ultimately, we, we've been here before. We've been here too many times, mate. We were here only a few months ago in January, weren't we? We left ourselves short. We sold players. We um, like to think we've learnt from some mistakes on the pitch. And I certainly sold have seen players. that. Um, give, give them away, Dan. So, not sold them. Yeah, them Absolutely. Away. Absolutely. We've seen Bella Rimby given away. Maitland Niles again on loan. Um, we can't get any money for him. Um, Pepe can't get any money for him. He's on loan. Um, yeah, Douglas Louise and Tielemans, one year left on their deal. 
come and pay 40 million, otherwise they ain't coming. And um, we don't do that. We just say, off you go. We'll pay you to go. <laughs> Mad. I don't get it. I really don't understand it. Um, before I come to Billy Lee, I want to ask you one thing, because Fabio Vieira was a lot of money, mate. He was 45 million pounds. Now, he hasn't kicked a ball yet. I have no idea if he's going to be the next um, Dennis Bergkamp or the next... Um, Who's another player I can pick? Jon Jensen. There we go. Uh, I've no idea what he's going to be like yet. Um, so I don't want to get too carried away. If I said to you, Lee, we've got 45 million, would you rather it go on Fabio Vieira or would you rather it go on towards the Tielemans and Basuma deal? Because I know where I'm going with that money. And listen, Fabio Vieira could be world class. We could look at it in a few years' time and go, God, I'm glad we didn't get Basuma and Tielemans. But in terms of a priority position, if I was going into Man United with Basuma and Tielemans in my midfield as opposed to Laconga and Chaka, I'd probably make do on not getting Fabio Vieira and putting that money towards that deal. And I, I just don't understand why we haven't done something like that when both of them were clearly available. Forget the Douglas Luiz thing for a second, because he's available as well. Tielemans and Bissouma in our midfield would have given me a lot of confidence going into this season as opposed to a Fabio Vieira, which, let's be honest, Smith Rowe um, could probably do that. So what's your thoughts on that, mate? Well, the, the thoughts on that is I, I'm going to hold me, me, me judgment on Vieira because I haven't seen him play. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't know nothing about Tommy Asu and he's been turned out to be a good signing and all that. So when it comes to actually signing players, I've got no problem with, with, with um, the, what they've done, Arteta and whatever. They've done really well on them. So I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, OK, we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. But what I have seen, you know, is that, we know we knew that we needed a position. We knew we needed someone in that midfield line, you know. And I, so I do think it was a priority. I think that um, you know um, we've, we've we've chased wide players or wingers or whatever, like Rafinha and players like that. Um, where, 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 where was the where was the wide player we was going to be getting? Like you know, what I mean, it's just yeah. absolutely um, fast, really. If I'm if I'm being there, like you know, so. You know, Vieira's going to have to come in now and he's going to have to hit the ground running. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm going to be honest, you know, even, I don't really know where he plays. I, I was speaking to a couple of people today, I said, where's his place? He said, oh, I can play across every, anywhere. He's that good. Well, you know, <laughs> he's going to have to do it now, like, you know. So, listen, that midfield it was, was, was always a problem. It was always a problem. Before Partey and uh, El Nini got injured. Now I can understand. Everybody can turn around and say, "Me, it's unlucky." The El Nini one's unlucky because he hasn't got a, rec uh, a recent history of being injured all the time. Partey don't go three or four games before he gets injured. You know what I mean? So if he's out for under five games, as soon as he gets up and running again, Dan, he'll be injured again. They've known this, and that's what what's gone on there. I, I will say though, um, that, you know, why? Why if Granit Xhaka's in the team at the moment, then I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit confident because he has been superb. I've got to say that. He has He's been, been brilliant. No, I agree week. with you. And that's, that's coming from me. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, but, but every time, I'm not being horrible, Dan, like, you know, every time he goes down injured or gets a kick now, I'm, I'm going to be not enjoying it because I know that if, if he, he gets injured, we've had it. You know what I mean? Like, do you remember it was a couple of years ago? It weren't that long ago. And I'm not saying it's the same... Um, people because it ain't when we just had Giroud up front and every time Giroud got injured or, or fell down I, I didn't enjoy it listen I've really really enjoyed the football we've, we've been playing like you know and it's yeah, been absolutely. Really, really good um, but we're a couple of injuries away from being 7th or 8th again like you know what I mean it's ridiculous what they've done today ridiculous you know um, it is mate it is ridiculous and the way I see it is this we are short in midfield. But ain't the only position we're short in, Lee. Uh, we are short in about four positions, in my opinion. And we haven't done anything. I thought we'd definitely cover one today. We haven't done anything. So, we've got no defensive midfielder after Thomas Party at the club, because the Conga has to now play there. El Nini is injured for a long time, as is Thomas Party for those five games. Like you say, how long is he going to be when he comes back before he gets another five games out? We have replaced Aubameyang, Lacazette and Pepe with Jesus. So where's the other two then? Where's where's the other two coming in? I haven't seen any of the others come in. Pepe, he's gone. We ain't got a replacement for him unless Mark Guinness is the next Martinelli. Well, I don't he's know what he's going to be like. He's, he's going to have, have to come in now and do a job. It. That's that's risky for me. Fabio Vieira is going to have to come in and do a job. Uh, but you know, for forty-five million, you like think he can at least do a job. You know, and more than that. When it comes to some of the other positions, I look at. I think we are now a Ramsdale injury, a Jesus injury, 
a party injury and a sacker injury away from having the team that come fifth last year. Now, they won't all get injured together at the same time. Well, I hope they won't anyway. <laughs> but we are definitely weaker than last year because Ramsdale, when he gets injured and Leno comes in, I'm all right with that. But Turner, yeah. wow, I've seen enough in pre-season and now he ain't ready. And if his debut's at Old Trafford, I better, I hope that he's like an Emmy Martinez and and not a, an Almunia. Let me tell you that now. Because he looked terrible for me in pre-season. Saka gets injured. And we might be able to do something with Smith Rowe or Vieira or Mark Winners or to try and cover what Pepe did when he came on. But in the midfield and up top, you know, Eddie deserves a lot of credit when he's come on of late. He does look good. He looks intense. He's yeah. done well. How many goals has he scored, Lee? Well, listen, at this so moment in time... We need some people who's going to come in and, and cover for Jesus' goals. You know what I mean? At this minute in time, that's not a problem because Jesus is doing the business. You know what I mean? And he's, and he's staying fit. But so... So we've been there. My problem is now is we're going to go to um, Switzerland in 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 the week with all the first team players going out there at some stage because they haven't we haven't got enough bodies. For instance, Mike the Niles could have played in that. Bellerin could have played in that. Like you know, right? We've got Cedric that can play in it. Right? Yeah, name name the same. Turner in goal. Cedric. You've got Holding that can play in there. Who's going to be the other central defender? Who's going to be the other white. central defender? Huh? Have to be Ben White, wouldn't it? Ben White, Gabriel, yeah, or, or you know, I mean, or, or, you know, yeah, who's got left back? Yeah, we've got we've got Tierney that's going to have to play that. The midfield, what's it? What's our midfield going to be? Our midfield's going to be Shaka, the Conger and Shaka. <laughs> it's going to be that, and then it's going to have to be that on a Sunday, and then it'll have to be that again the following week, and then it'll have to be that the following week. Oh, well, then one of them will get injured, and then we've got to go to to Spurs with without no one there. Uh, and if that does happen, you know what I mean? Like that, you know, it's just an incredible, incredible decision is what they've made today. It is, mate. Incredible. It is, mate. It really is. Um, we've got 15 minutes left of the window, Billy. Um, Douglas Louise has been rumours to come to Arsenal, but what I'm being told is the third bid's been rejected. That was our final bid and the deal's dead and he's staying at Aston Villa now. That, listen, things can change. We saw us sign our Sharvin in, in bloody February of a January transfer window, so things can change, mate. But I want to ask you a couple of questions before we go into last night's game. Would Douglas Louise be a signing that would improve us, is my first question, and would you miss him massively at Aston Villa? Uh, yes to both of those. Um, he's a he's a fantastic player on his day. When he's not on his day, he can be a little bit no man's land, if you know what I mean. Um, but no, when he's when he's on it, which he's looked on it every time he's played um, in re recently, anyway, um, he definitely improve Arsenal, and especially um, with the injuries to Party and El Nenny, um, he just slot into that. Um, into that midfield alongside Chaka, and he would do a phenomenal job for you. Um, would we miss him? Absolutely, we would. He leaves a gaping hole. If Kamara was to get injured, then all, all right, we've signed Den Donker, but I personally don't see Den Donker as, a, as an out and out number six. Douglas Louise arguably isn't either. Um, but I, th I think I see Den Donker as more of a either a number eight. Or I see him as a as a number eight that can play centre back because of his height, basically. Um, so I don't see if Kamara was to get injured, who would play there as, aside from Nakamba, who isn't really the, the the Premier League quality that we that we need. Um, so it'd have been it'd have been a massive loss for us. Had you have offered the 20, 25 million two or three weeks ago, then it'd be your player now. It's the fact that you've left it and left it and left it to get to deadline day. And we can't afford to sell players for, for such little money with no one to come in to replace them. Maybe if, we, if we'd have got 40 million, um, which was reportedly our asking price, we'd have gone, all right, there you go. Right, let's go and get Conor Gallagher or someone, someone like that. Um, but for 20, 25 million, we're just not going to be able to do that, which is why we've had to reject it. Um, so, yeah, the asking price was there um, and it turns out that you, that you didn't want to pay for it. And understandably so, with one year left on his contract, he's not worth 40 million with one year left on his contract. Um, 
but to be honest with you, I don't see why you didn't just go all out and try and get Tielemans. Because he's, while I, I love Douglas Louise, I'm a massive fan of his. Tielemans is a much better midfielder at the end of the day. Yeah, and, and I think that's a great point. I mean, I look at, you know, my situation earlier with Basuma and Tielemans, looking at both of them. We could have looked at both Douglas Louise and mm. Tielemans today, but we ain't bothered. And we ain't bothered because, for whatever reason, we don't believe that they are worth the money that Leicester and Villa want. Now, sometimes that's OK, but when you're doing this on the last day of the season, it is rather embarrassing when El Elneny's injured. And if he wasn't, we wouldn't even be looking at Douglas Louise. But because they are so naive in the way that they've looked at this transfer window in that position again. We're all thinking we'll get one because we have to. We'll get one because we have to. We've been linked with Pedro Neto, Jeremy Pino, Zaha, Udric or Mudrick from uh, Shakhtar the next. Where's our winger? No, we ain't got one. We're just stuck with who we've got now. So it's all very bizarre. Now, I'm not saying everybody knows that every single rumour means we're definitely going to get someone in that position. But we're really happy with the way we're playing at the moment. We know we're not going to win the league. We're in a top four race still. And that team is shorter than it was last season. And we had one game a week and come fifth. So as much as I think Jesus and Zinchenko and Saliba, by the way, have raised us to a different level, can they do that in all four competitions throughout the whole season without getting one injury? That's a the, massive ask, Lee. Yeah, the, the one thing that, the only thing that I can think of, and it is a little bit of a positive, is that the season stops on the 18th of November and doesn't come back to the 26th. So it's two months and then basically one week and the transfer window opens again. It's not like four or five months. So maybe they're looking at it and thinking that we can get through till November and then um, we can we, we can address it in January again, but I, I don't I, I don't really know you know the, this what comes to January these two players are going to be with six months left of their contract. Yeah. My listen when you look at Tillemans, I watched Tillemans today. You know, I mean, if if you really really looking at him today, you ain't going to buy. No one's buying him. No one's buying him. His heart's not into that club. You know what I mean? So that that that's that's on Leicester to to to. Um, to sort and, uh, you know, go through that thing, you know what I mean? He's in and out of the team as he is, Dan, you know what I mean? Because his heart's not in it. I don't know what you're going to get with this um, uh, Douglas Louise now, you know, he didn't even, you know, play it, play on, on, on last night and hasn't played for, for a few games before. Now they've got a midfield, another midfield player in. They've got now Stephen Gerald, who I think, was, you know, is under a lot of pressure as it already is. Now got to try and uh, manage an un unhappy player going into the next few so you know so look, look you know on on their heads be it but um what, what what's happened is, is you know we, we've played poker haven't we like you know what i mean we've we and and we've actually like uh thought we had a good end and and then realized that we haven't and, and now we've uh lee we've, who, we've who do you bluff over. Who, who? Who do you point a finger at before we move on to tomorrow night, uh, yesterday's game, mate? Who, who deserves a lot of criticism here? Is it one person, five people, two people? Well, it's all of them, really, at the end of the day. They're all, on, they're all in it together, you know what I mean? They all got to take the credit when, when they sign these players, uh, Edu and, um, uh, and Arteta as well. But I, I think it's firmly at um, Edu's door, this, if I'll be honest, because... Um, you know, he's got five wins out of five. He's probably saying, oh, I'm concentrating on the game. You go and get this game to get that light. But the, the, I blame it, uh, Edu, but I also blame Arteta because, you know, if you have a look at other managers out there, i.e. Conte, i.e. other managers, they demand to get what they want. You know, uh, Arteta's just not only... He's, he's let this happen in January. <laughs> he's let it happen again. So I'm, I'm going to blame him as uh, as well, you know. And 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 the, and the fact of the matter is, I, I don't want no one turning around. All these lovers of and all that turning around and saying, "Oh, you know, um, oh, he's not had this and he's had that." There's no more excuses. They've had the whole of the summer to sort this out. Our terror is part of that, you know what I mean? And, and and it will come down at the end of the day on results, uh, you know. And, and I'm gutted for him. I'm absolutely gutted for him, you know, because he's he's done everything we've asked him to do in this 
first five games. He's got five wins. People turning around and saying they haven't beaten anybody and whatever like that. You know? I mean, I, I, I say what I don't look like that. Fulham, Fulham are a real tough team. They took points off of Liverpool. Um, Ashton Villa caused us all sorts of problems towards the end of that game. All right, the first half I should have been out, out of, you know, we should have been out of out of the park. Second, you know, like Palace have, have gone and give uh, Manchester City a, a hell of a fr fright. They've gone and beaten, uh, got, got something at Liverpool, should I say. No game's easy in the Premier League. He's done exactly what he's wanted to do. And then, like, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, you do get injuries. And, 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 and the only one's a big blow. I'm bothered about, I'm not going to ever, if he turned around and says, oh, we've been unlucky with party, I, I, I'm, I'm done with party. I've told you that months ago, I'm done with it. Yeah, you did. I've said because he's unreliable. He's too too injury prone. I've told us. I have never said get a backup for 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 Partey. I've said replace Partey. Get someone in that's reliable and plays in week in week out. And but and Partey's the backup. That's been my upbringing. Now I've seen that and said that. Why haven't they done that? You know what I mean? Like you know they cannot be sitting here. They do and 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 I'll say going oh, on it unlucky about Partey. You know it's been there. It's oh it's. You know, so it's firmly on all of them. It's firmly on all of them. Um, but, but the saving grace is that he's got Vieira still in the, that's not had a game yet. He, he's got to come in and, and do the bit. And, and, and Marquinhos, Marquinhos has got to come come up to Trump's. You know, they've obviously seen something in him. And this is where I'll, I'll back Arteta. He's probably might have seen something to go, do you know what? He deserves a crack more than Pepe. Let's see. But like, you know, these Europa League games are going to be very, very interesting. For Thursday's game now is interesting for me because it's the first time I'm going to see Vieira and it's the first time I'm going to really see Marquinhos as well, like, you know, and they've got to hit the ground running then. 100%, man. I can't disagree with anything, really. Um, you know, I, I kind of sort of was thinking, yeah, Arteta and Edu and the Cronkies and the board all need to take the blame. I think you're right. I think Edu has to look at this one. He's the one who's supposed to get the, the deals done over the line and uh, he's failed yet again to get uh, a good enough squad to go into this season. So, yeah, it's on the, it's on all their heads because apparently they're all in this together and it's a we, not I. So, um, we have to look at all of them, aren't we? Uh, Billy, let's talk a little bit about that last night, mate. Um, we sound a bit doom and gloom, me and Lee, <laughs> don't we? We sound a bit doom and gloom considering we're top of the league, five wins and uh, got the job done last night. Um I'm not going to lie, Billy. I thought it was it should have been a lot more comfortable for us than it was. Um, you guys will, will, will take a lot from it in terms of trying to defend for your lives and keeping us out for the way you did. But uh, what did you make of it uh, last night from an Aston Villa point of view and, of course, from an Arsenal perspective, mate? Yeah, it was, from a Villa point of view, it was slightly concerning, but what we expected, really. You know, Arsenal aren't slouches like they used to be of the past couple of years. You know, you'll do this to teams. Um, I tweeted just before the game that the the first 10 or so minutes are, are huge because you're going to come out swinging, as you do. Um, we managed to ride the initial wave. Um, we went toe-for-toe -to -toe with you in the first 10, 15, 20 minutes. It looked... I think that first 20 minutes or so, it was a real good game. There was a, there was a nice little edge to it. Um, tackles flying in here, there and everywhere. Um we it was it just looked like two teams that wanted to win, um, and as you just grew into the game, we we lost all momentum. You get that goal, um, an unlucky bounce off uh, Matty Cash. I want to say it was um, straight straight onto Martinez. He no time to react really. Parries it straight out to Jesus. And he finished it, which is uh, which is what Jesus will do in those situations. So it was a little bit frustrating to concede a goal like that. Um, and from there, you just dominated the rest of the half. It could it could easily have been a lot more, but I think we did make it tough for you at times as well. Um, so there is certainly stuff to take out from the game. Um, from a Villa perspective, I think it was much better second half. We came out and fought a little bit more. Um, we got that. We got that goal. Got the equaliser. Um, another reason why Douglas Louise didn't leave because he's the only source of goals we've got at the minute from those corners. It's two he's done in the last week. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's there's just not a lot of creativity for Villa, unfortunately. Um, 
And I don't think the amount of options that we've got up front particularly help things. You know, we've got um, Bailey, Buendia, Coutinho, Watkins, Ings. And if you include the young boy, Archer, in that, you've got six players there. And we're constantly changing. Not one group of them have, have played together for a prolonged period of time yet. So how, how are you going to create and form bonds if if you're constantly chopping and changing? So that's concerning. Um, there's no... I, I mentioned that um, the front three is constantly changing, but, you know, we've also got the midfield problems. We've got the defence, um, you know, with Mings, Carlos's injury, uh, Chambers coming in and out, Cons are coming in and out. We don't have a proper centre-back pairing just yet. We don't know who's coming or going. Um, midfield is very much the same. John McGinn went missing again, um, I thought. Um, so it is, it is very concerning. And the tactics aren't necessarily helping things either. Um, I'm not Gerard out just yet. Um, or not really anyway. I think the sacking is inevitable. And I think if he's going to get sacked, it needs to be sooner rather than later. Um, I was mentioning to Lee just before we started the recording that we've now got Poch there. He's available. Um, we can't, we don't know how much longer he's going to be available for. Leicester could lose Rogers at any second and go straight in and get him. While he's there, we need to make sure that we get him. Because other than that, for me, the only other option is Graham Potter. And why is he going to leave Brighton? I just think it's unrealistic, to be honest with you, at, at this moment in time. So if, if that makes me Gerard out, then, then so be it. I'm a bit 50-50 on whether he goes or stays at the minute. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's not good. We need We need improvement serious improvement but these these two games against yourselves man city on on saturday as well they're free hits at the end of the day we're not expected to to get anything out of those games we're expected to lose we we expected to lose um but the games following that against leicester and also southampton we need to get six points from anything less than six points and we're in real trouble because of the run of games we've had so far, the run of form that we've had so far is just horrendous. It's the worst start since 1997. Um, it's, it's, it's not looking good. And Villa fans are turning and they're turning quickly and it's going to get very toxic before you know it. If it's not, Listen. if it's not really toxic already. Listen, Gerard's under massive pressure and I'm not so sure that I'm too convinced by him or Frank Lampard anyway, and I've told you that, Bill. But um, I do think he's in trouble when it's not just about the Man City and Arsenal games because you're not expected to take three points and then you're right. If you don't beat Leicester and Southampton, he's going to go. He is going to go, yeah. mate. There's nothing, there's no way about it. You can't be in a relegation fight, mate. That's Aston Villa spending that money and being in a relegation fight. I do agree with you, though, in the way that you're saying about the front six can't seem to be any telepathy field connection. I don't quite understand why that is because I rate a lot of them. I think Ollie Watkins and Danny Ings know where the goal they're is. They're all fantastic players, but I they agree. need to form bonds up front. You know, you look at the front four that you've got at the minute, for example, Saka Martinelli, Odegaard, and Jesus. They're playing with each other week in, week out. They know where each other are. They know the runs that each other are going to make. We don't have that. We're constantly changing. But because mm. we've got so many options and we're not scoring goals at the minute, we are going to chop and change to find that perfect balance. But by the time we've found that perfect balance, it's probably too late. Maybe you're right. Before I come to Lee... um. Bill, I just want to ask you, um, Tyro Mings, or as I like to call him, Hulk Hogan, uh, what the hell was that all about? That was a blatant penalty, was it not? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, th I could understand if it was the other way around. on the floor. I was thinking, yeah, what's if happening it, here? If it was the other way around, I'd be screaming for a penalty. But I think as with my claret and blue um, tinted glasses on, I think Saka's, Saka's looking for it a bit there. 
Well, I thought it was a little bit harsh, personally. I thought it was... Uh, I don't know what I don't know what the VAR were looking at. What, Honestly, I don't know what Saka did, as, as did wrong As soon as VAR said that it, they were looking at it, I was, I'd resign to the fact that it was a penalty. You thought it was going to be a pen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Listen, I think you've been fair, to be honest, on what Arsenal's performance was. I think we were the better team and deserved the three points. And although it was a shaky last 10 minutes, Lee, I think we could take a lot of positives from yesterday. I saw some individual performances there that I was proud of, particularly Martinelli and Jesus' link-up play together. I think they been fantastic. Saka definitely had a better game than he has had of last uh, of late. I thought Erdegaard in the first half was mustard, and for me, Chaka and Lukonga's partnership there. Mm. I mean, I have to say it, Lee. I, I thought Chaka was near on man of the match. He's one of the ones I looked at for man of the match yesterday. I thought Chaka was sensational. So, a lot of good performances, judges. No, it's a great performance. I, 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 listen, all negative negativity now out of the way from from the shots and winning. That's done and dusted. There's nothing we can do about that. What what I see yesterday was a fantastic performance. I thought it was a brilliant performance from all, all round. We should have been three or four nil up in the first half. I, I felt that Aston Villa had a game plan to upset us, kick us, try and put us out of our rhythm and all that. Like, and we 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 it didn't stop us. It didn't deter us. I thought we played some some sensational stuff. Probably you know should have gone in a couple more goals in front. I thought. I think that if Martin any scores, it's it's probably one of the goals of the season. It turns out now that it's probably the save of the season. Like you know, brilliant, brilliant um, shot, brilliant, brilliant save. I got fortunate with a goal. I felt that probably Martinez would would look at that and say that he maybe should have got got that. But it did take a slight deflection. But I I, I actually thought that I really really enjoyed the first half. I thought we played really really well. The second half, what what happened in the second half? I think. Um, the more and more it get goes on the game, the more ner- you know you, you one nil. I think that um, Stephen Gerrard's gla- game plan was that there may be a nil nil to bring on like the likes of Coutinho and try and um, uh, get something. They get a a, a goal. Um, dubious circumstances. I didn't. I, I didn't think there was nothing wrong. With it. I think it was a goal, but um, you know, a lot of people are going to argue the fact, but. Um, the response after that was great, Dan. We responded really, really well. And uh, I, I think then, you know, sometimes you have to see out those sort of games which are a little bit nervy and all that. Like, and I think we've done that really well. So, for me, it was a fantastic performance. I thought it was a really, really good game. Really enjoyed it. Two tough games um, that we've had um, against, obviously, like the promoted team in Fulham. Well, the one thing I will say, two mistakes, Dan, uh, in our last two games have cost us nearly with 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 mistakes from uh, Gabriel and obviously Aaron Ramsdale yesterday but ultimately I, I, I was quite pleased with the performance yesterday I, I, I'm, I'm going to say I, I, I was pleased with the way we played in midfield I think Shaka has been outstanding I, I, I think he's very very close to the man of the match but for me Martinelli just just pipped him the, the, the work rate of the front three was sensational and I'm going to say this now I thought we got the substitutions right I, I look at it and I think you know Taking Ben White off was a big, big call, Dan, because I didn't think Ben White done anything wrong. I thought he, he played was really like, well. I thought he played really well. You know, it was a bit of a surprise whether he got a knock or something. I don't know, but you know, it was done that. And I, I think Eddie was superb as well. I think Eddie actually played a role yesterday that is what a substitute needed to play. Played for the team, Dan. Didn't play for himself. You know, what I mean, like ran into areas, chased down. Had one shot, which you know uh, I, I felt he should have had. Uh, he could have had it if it goes wide. It, it's it kept the the clock ticking, but I thought he, he his his performance, his contribution was very very mature. I've actually seen him come on in a few games before and play for himself, not in a nasty way, but trying to play for to try and prove that he's you know wants to be this and wants to be that. I felt he come on yesterday and if he. he put all that to the side and played for the team. That was fantastic to see as well. So, all in all, I think it was a great performance from us. Um, all round, that was probably, it was much, much better, that, that performance, than uh, than Saturday against Fulham. Much, much better. Yeah, it was. And I must say, Lee, the thing that really has impressed me this season under Mikel Arteta's like, Arsenal is that we seem to be able to bounce back within a few minutes of going a goal either down or getting an equaliser. And I think that against Leicester, we went kind of two goals and then straight away we see a response and then obviously Fulham going a goal down and then turning the game around. We haven't seen that since Wolves last season. And then again, when Villa 
come back into the game, we killed them off straight away. And that's been really impressive for me because we've had a yeah. young team where I think we've now seen them grow in terms of their mentality because the, the mentality last year was a little bit deflated when we conceded a goal. Eds went down a bit. I think the fans definitely need a lot of credit. I know you weren't there yesterday, Lee, but I was, and it was epic, mate. The mm. fans were superb, again. And the fan base, whenever we've gone down a goal, whenever there's been a mistake made, we ain't gone down. We've stayed up there. And I think that does help. Because if you have a crowd that is 100% behind your team, I don't care what anyone says, the fact the, the, the uh, players, they feel it. And I think they felt it yesterday. And I think that's what kept them going. I really do. And I think that, you know, we have acted like 12th man massively home and away for probably the last, you know, 10 to 12 months, in my opinion. And I've really have seen how that's uh, like how that's kind of brought a connect to the fan base and the players. And I think that's been fantastic to see. One player I want to mention before I come back to Billy Doe Lee is Sambi Lukonga, because it looks now that we haven't signed anyone, that he's going to be the answer moving forward. Now, I was really impressed with his performance mm. yesterday, judges. I thought Sambi Lukonga looked fantastic. Most of the passes that he made were progressive ones. I thought he was comfortable on the ball. He looked composed. A lot of the players seemed comfortable to give him the ball. It wasn't like they were avoiding him or seeing him as the weak link. And I think yesterday that was the position that I was more worried about and most people were because there was no party or El Nini. You know what you're getting from El Nini. And I think last season, Lukonga got a massively hard time and I felt sorry for him. I don't think it was fair to throw a 22-year-old in at number six against Nottingham Forest next to Charlie Patino. I don't think it's fair to throw in a 22-year-old at number six on his own in midfield against Brighton and Southampton while Chak is playing at left-back and he's got no one around him with experience. What I saw... Last season, at the start of the season, was Lukonga next to Party and Maitland Niles, and he looked half decent. Now I've seen him next to Granite Chaka, an experienced head. I think he had a half decent game. So I know it's all doom and gloom about our midfield looking weak, but he's got a big chance here now, Lukonga. And I just want to get your thoughts on his performance and what confidence you have in him moving forward. So, oh, I think that the, the 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 reason that he struggled is because he's not had that experienced partner in, alongside him. You know what I mean? Like uh, he's 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 young, he's naive, he's learning himself, and there he is trying to have to make his way at Arsenal Football Club, which is a big thing to do in the first place. And he's got to babysit Charlie Patino in, in in a game against Nottingham Forest, and then he's got like, uh, oh, well, we'll play you in your on your own in there, or we'll play with Maitland Niles, and then like you know. All of a sudden now he's got a proper midfield alongside him, i.e. Um, uh, Shaka or, you know, someone like Partey when he's played. And, and you know, all of a sudden he, he, he's got someone telling him what to do, a little bit more experience and all that. If you're a young kid coming into the game, you know what I mean? Uh, I was fortunate when I when I started playing a game that I had a, a real top, top experience player. When I look back on it... Uh, I won't name names, but like he got on my nerves because he was telling me, "Don't run here, do this, do that, do this, do that." But ultimately, he was helping me along. You know what I mean? Like my way through it. Imagine, it, but you got Sammy Conga. Like he's he's having to try and do it, trying to help Charlie Patino along the way, and and, and not helping himself. And I think that's been a difficult thing for him to do. That experienced player, you need someone there alongside you, like for five, ten minutes, like Lee, Lee, tuck in and don't, don't go, keep, keep by my shoulder, don't move, don't move, don't go out of this position. We've got, we're, we're under a little bit of pressure. Just stay here, just stay here. It, you know, Shaka was doing that to him yesterday, like you know what I mean, like, and, and uh, the kid's got ability. I see that yesterday. I've, listen, no, no Arsenal fans turned around over the last six months, even through his poor performances and turned around and said, oh, he's rubbish or whatever. They've all turned around and said, oh, oh, he's a good player. He needs a loan. He needs maybe to go out on loan and all that. Like, Well, that, that, that's not going to happen now. He's got an opportunity now to make some some uh, progress in his career. You know, and I think that's a good thing. You know, he's a Belgium international. He's got a chance now to really, well, he's going to have to play week in, week out now for, for you know, uh, for well, at least up until uh, the World Cup, and this might this, he'll be looking at it now, sitting in his um, his house today, thinking, right, if I perform well now and do well for Arsenal, I've got a chance of not only just making the World Cup squad, starting it and all that. So it's a real couple of carrots for him to to really go for and all that, like you know. So I thought he was brilliant yesterday, like you know. And I tell you what, I looked at that midfield yesterday, McGinn. 
Ramsey, who I think is a very, very good player. You know, um, any, you know, they've, they've got some good players in midfield. I can't think of the other. Who's the other midfield? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. No, yeah, they've got to, so they're all decent players. It stood the test. It weren't like any, uh, you know, a, a, a poor, poor Aston Villa midfield. I looked at their midfield yesterday. I thought, oh, we're going to struggle in midfield and all that. Like credit to Shaka, credit to him. We, we dominated in there, like and um, put them under the pump a little bit. He was part of that in that that, that three that, that that dominated that night, you know. What you don't want now, though, Dan, is like Ulegaard dropping out of it, like you know, and, and 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 it's important that we keep that momentum so that he's playing with the the best players. It's no good in playing with with other players week in week out. He's got to get a, a settled midfield free so he can come in and just play. So for the next five or six games, you've got Shaka and, and Ulegaard alongside him. I think he he'll do really really well. Hopefully. Um, Odegaard's not too bad on the injury front. Yeah, that is a big hope. Um, Billy, before I let you go, mate, apologies, we've run over a bit. I only told you to come yeah, on for no a worries. bit, but it's the way it is, bro. <laughs> uh, I want to get your thoughts before you go, though, seriousness about Arsenal. You've heard from myself and Lee. You know we watch this every week and we go to most of the games. But as an Aston Villa fan, you're obviously from the outside looking in. And what does that look like outside looking in as an Aston Villa fan, looking at Arsenal's chances this season? A lot of people are saying top four. Some people are crazy saying we might have a title challenge. Like, where do you see Arsenal this season um, after playing us and seeing from what seeing us from what you have from the outside looking in, mate? Yeah, I mean, first things first, I'm very jealous. If you compare where Villa are and where Arsenal are, to be honest with you. Um, but no, it, Arsenal are going in one direction and that's up. Um, you're playing some fantastic football. You've got some fantastic players. I completely understand the uh, the worry of of the squad depth. But if you, if you are lucky on the injury front and you keep the majority of the players that you've got playing for you in that starting 11 fit now for, for the, at least until the world cup, for example, you, it's, it's only going to end well. Um, I said that you'd finish top four at the beginning of the season. I can even see you pipping um, Spurs, who, in my opinion, I had um, above you. I can see you pipping them to, to third. I don't see it. It's not a title charge, um, but I, I certainly think after playing you, after playing you, after seeing how you're playing um, these first few games, you can you can certainly get that third spot, in my opinion. It, it, it's just fantastic football. You're an enjoyable team to watch as well. It's not like, in my opinion, Man City are a little bit boring to watch because it's every game is exactly the same. Um, you just look a lot more fluid. You allow players to to kind of express themselves a little bit as well. Um, so I I enjoy watching you as well, which always helps. Um, so yeah, I think I think you you're going in one direction and that's up. And it's looking really, really good for Arsenal now. Okay, that's why I bring Billy on, see, Lee. Do you know what I mean? He, he, <laughs> he, brings, us, he brings us up, mate. Do you know what I mean? That's why we get Billy on. Uh, listen, Bill, I'm going to let you go, man. Uh, before you do, though, uh, shout out, plug your channel and let everyone know where they can follow you, mate. Yeah, so you can follow me um, on Twitter at AVBilly, um, part of the Total Screamers podcast. You can also follow us on there at Total Screamers. Um, come over, give us a listen, give us a download, give us a like, do whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. I'll see you all soon. Yeah, man, take it easy, and guys, yeah, make buddy. sure you go and follow Billy. And uh, you'll see it tomorrow night on our ch on my channel as well on uh, Football Talk Man mate. podcast. Definitely. So uh, I'll I look see you forward soon. to chatting to you on there, man. Take care, Bill. I'll speak take to you soon, easy. bro. And you, bye. Take care, man. Um, what a good lad, and he bigs up Arsenal as well, Lee. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, mate, we need to talk about Sunday um, because there's a few injury concerns. No, I don't think mm. I don't think it's been confirmed, but there's concerns. Erdegaard is one of them. Ramsdale is another one. Um, and somebody said that Ben White and Saka were kind of having nursing some knocks, so to speak, whatever that means. Um, I am worried about this game not because of anything other than it's at Old Trafford and we don't normally do that well there. Um, I don't fear Manchester United in terms of the way they're playing. I still don't think they're outstanding. I looked at them tonight and didn't go, wow. I also watched them against um, their 
opponents this season thinking they've still got massive weaknesses in their side that I think we can definitely hurt. But there's something about this fixture, Lee, that always rings true that it's going to be quite difficult, mate. And I just want to get your thoughts going into this one if Arsenal are fully fit or if Arsenal have a couple of knocks. What's your thoughts, man? Well, is the worry, isn't it? Like, you know, I, I think um, obviously we're going to be about um, two, two, two players from midfield. That's what we know that now. You know, the, the worry for me is who the guys played really, really well last year games. I thought he was magnificent um, yesterday and, and, and the game before. But you know, driving us forward and everything like that. If he is out, out it's not as a big a blow as losing Partey and um, and Lenny because. Uh, Smith Rowe can fit in there, or even Vieira, like you know. What I mean, you spend thirty-five million pound on a player that, that that can come in there and be a replacement. So, I'm not too too worried about. It, but you want Ulugar being there because he's a captain, he's and, he, and he's doing really really well. Ramsdale one's a worry for me, like you know, it, because he was sort of like holding his hands. Now I don't know if he was that was a little bit of kidology or something there, Dan, because straight after that he's he's he's, he's kicking the ball like you know seventy eighty yards. You you can't do that if you've got an hamstring injury. You just can't do it. So uh, and I, I will I, say, I, Lee Erdegaard Erdegaard is walking around clapping the fans off, and you don't do that if you if you've got something serious. Yeah, you can, I, I don't sort it out, you know. Yeah, I, I think with Udegaard, maybe like it's a bruised ankle or something like, you know what I mean? It was a bad tackle by McGinn, by the way. Um, very, There's a very few nasty. going in last night, weren't there? Yeah, yeah very, very nasty tackle. Um, and um, But um, I, I think at the end of it, uh, maybe like, you know, it's a bit of bruising and everything like that. Also, um, it, it, it might well be that he took the knock on the ankle and he's on a booking five, ten minutes to go from the end, you know, when you've got to defend and make tackle. So it was the obvious choice to take him off from that point of view. So um, maybe it was a little bit of that in there and he's not so bad, but hopefully he is there. I, listen, I think if we go with the same team, I think that um, Sinchenko's got to come back into the side. I, 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 we're big fans of Tierney, as we know, like, you know, but he's not quite up to up to speed yet, you know. Played, uh, played well yesterday, I thought. Though played well. Yeah, yesterday. he done he done yeah. all right. I think like his crossing was a little bit poor. And I just felt he was just you know you can't get round the round the player at the moment because of the fitness side of everything like that. But that's a good 60, 70 minutes from the or with four game yesterday. That on top of that, he'll do well on that. But if he doesn't play in this game, then he gets the ninety minutes on Thursday, and and and, and we. Um, you know, get him up and running. But don't forget, this is a player that had no pre-season training, uh, no pre-season games, Dan. So he's going to struggle a little bit. But, um, uh, you know, I, I, I've watched Man United today and they don't impress me. They don't impress me. Like, they didn't impress me tonight. I thought, like, at times, Leicester were a better side. But they're one of those sides, a little bit like Tottenham, that they you on the counter attack. They, they, they suck you in and all that, like... Listen, we've got to be at our best on Sunday. And if we are at our best, we've got a chance to beat them. But the one thing that we've got to do is take our chances against them. We ain't going to have as many as we've had uh, yesterday. So we need to take our chances. But I think it's going to be a difficult game. But, I th you know, it's, it's one of those games now. Do you know, like, I do the start on 11s and all that. Like, you, you know, you, you, the last three or four games, you're thinking, yeah, it's going to be this team, this team, and everything like that. Now, all of a sudden... We're worried about injuries and things like that. Who else is going to break down and all that? Like, you know, as long as Saliba uh, is fit, as long as Shaq is fit, Jesus, we've got a chance. You know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. that our front three will cause problems. Then they will cause some sort of problems if if they're if they're at their best, they will will cause problems. Like, you know, and I think that this game, I don't know how you feel about this, will be a different game pressure wise because I felt. The last few games, must-win games, can't afford to drop points against the teams that we played. There'd be a little bit more of a different pressure on this game, like, you know, where if we had actually, if we drew this game, I think people would say that was a positive. So, but if we are drawn against Fulham or we are drawn against uh, Aston Villa or we are drawn against Bournemouth, people would have gone, well, this ain't great, you know what I mean? So, um, listen, it's going to be a difficult game. Do I think we can win this game? Yeah, I do. I, I, because Man United are not great. But the fact of the matter is that whenever Man United are not great and we've played them, they've always done us. So, um, listen, when we was when we was a little bit down and all that, and Man United come to town, they always steamrolled us. 
you know what I mean, like um, bully boy tactics against us, you know what I mean? We're in the ascendancy at this moment in time. This, I'm, I'm still not convinced that they're the real deal to me. Like, they look better when Casemiro come on today and, and, and Ronaldo, but they're not quite up to scratch. A little bit like Tierney, like, they've not had the same uh, pre-season at the moment, so they're not quite there. Still a good time to take them on. I, I, I'm backing us to get the result. What are you going for then, prediction? I, I, I'm going to go for 2-1. I think that we'll nick it. Uh, I think we'll go 2 nil up and they get they come back at us and we're hold on. That's, that's what I think will happen. I'm going to agree. Um, I said to Cecil that we win the first five games. And I didn't say six because this game, I just didn't have the full confidence that we'd do it. But I'm just going to be confident and optimistic now because I'm looking at what I'm seeing and I'm enjoying it. And I'm going to stick with it and go with 2-1 Arsenal with you, mate. And I'm going up there on Sunday. I really hope it's a good weekend, man. I'm going up with my dad, travel back on a Monday. So I'm really hoping that we can take three points and um, be top of that league and be proud to be top of that league because the way we're playing at the moment, we deserve to be there, mate. We really do. Um, last couple of minutes, Lee, I just want to talk a little bit about the transfer window with some of the other clubs and what your thoughts are of their business. I think Chelsea have had a madness, mate. I really do. I think they've had the best window. Um, I look at what they brought in. It's mad, really. Like, Kukurea is better than Alonso. Rudiger's a good centre-half, but they brought in Koulibaly and Fafana. They've got Raheem Sterling. They've got Aubameyang. Um, and they brought in a couple of young players as well that have come in. It's a pretty good window as far as Chelsea concerned. I think Manchester United have spent a lot, but still look like there's more they could have done. Tottenham, likewise, they've done well, but still think they a few gaps there defensively. I don't think they look great at times. And I know Conte gets them out of a lot of trouble, but um, that won't last for the whole season. I think they will slip up in a couple of games. Um, Manchester City are just a madness with what they've done with Haaland and Alvarez. They've got, they're gone, mate. They're done. Bye-bye. Title winners, absolutely walk it. Liverpool, yeah, I think they could have done more. I think Arthur, the guy that we wanted last season, also uh, he's gone there now. Uh, and I think they needed a midfielder to boost him up, but they probably had an OK window because they already had a good squad. But the team that I think have actually done really well is West Ham because um, mm. they bought in about eight players. Paqueta, Emerson, uh, the right back they've got, um, the two centre-halves, Kera and um, Aguered. They've got um, Skamaka, Flindans, Maxwell Corne. So West Ham have done well. So... Yeah, just wanted to see where you're at now. If anything's changed in terms of your predictions, do you see anybody changing the position no, in the league table? I think West Ham have, will, will be very, very pleased with their business. They've got a midfield that's uh, very, very strong, if, you know, when you look at that now. Because you've got, obviously, Declan Rice as, as, as good as he is and all that. Like, and, um, uh, they, they should have won yesterday. They should have beaten us. But I watched the game um, when, I, when I got in last night. And, uh, I, I, you know... I know it is the Conte effect because I, I think that Spurs were the, the team that just... They are very, very good on the counter-attack Spurs. They, they only had a couple of opportunities to score from one of their one of their counter-attacks. But I, I thought West Ham should have probably won it at the end. But um, they, they'd be pleased with what they've done. But I, I'm, Chelsea, look, Chelsea spent a lot of money on two central defenders that have had to replace. Not, not, not through choice. They've you know, lost two central defenders... For nothing, so they've had to replace and, and fair play to them. They've replaced their two central defenders with uh, with quality, with a lot, a lot, a lot of money. But in saying that, I, I, I thought they was poor against Southampton, really, really poor. So I don't, I, you know, Bamiang, I think is going to cause us the same sort of problems as Arsenal because I don't think he's a um, a whole uh, that that player that plays like in the in you know up front the lone striker role we couldn't do it at Arsenal so they're going to ask him to do it at Chelsea it'd be very interesting to see if Tuchel can get him to do that where Arteta couldn't like, you know so it'd be interesting to see that um, they've got three or four players there that in and out of the team that are not quite quite right but they've they've, they've given themselves a chance with the one I think Manchester United like Manchester United are uh, I think uh, two points off Tottenham now, and they were the laughing joke after two games or three games. They've turned it around, spent some good money. I think Casemiro is a fantastic player. I, I really do like. I really do like him. Like you know, but they've got problems with the Ronaldo situation. I don't think that's ever going to go away, Dan. Like you know, so um, I, I think a lot of teams have done some some good business. Brighton, for instance, you know, have sold a couple of their top players and they're still up there, still grinding results and everything like that. The one team that I think has done really well in the transfer market 
um, and and done really well with Fulham. Fulham made a couple of really uh, decent signings, you know what I mean? And um, watch Willie, watch Willie do well now. I bet you. Anyway. Well, I hope he does. <laughs> I've got no problem that he does. So good luck to him, like you know. But they've just got that James as well, like you know what I mean on a on a, on a years uh, like so. They they, they they look at it and do very very well. There's, but um, ultimately. Um, Mm, who's had the best window? We'll, we'll wait and see, like you know. What I mean, I, got, I just want before we go, just ask you one question. Um, or we go on, mentioned mate. it to you earlier on. Uh, you know, who's 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 at the moment had the best start in the Premier League? Is it Arsenal with five wins out of five, or is it Tottenham with three wins, two draws? But those two draws have come at West Ham away and Chelsea away. Let so, me ask um, you. This, let me ask you this: Do you think that Chelsea and West Ham? Are playing well enough for Tottenham to be happy with two points? No, I, I, I'd that's have been why I'll go with Arsenal then because we're yeah, top of the I, league. I'd have been disappointed. I, I just think Arsenal. I, I, I'd be disappointed if we'd lost to uh, a drawn to Chelsea. I, Chelsea played really, really well that day. The following week I they did. went and lost three 0 to, to Leeds. I don't. I, I, I don't think that they're as they're, they're as good as what they was made to look a lot better. By the way Tottenham played, I'll, I'll be honest. You know what I mean? Like I know, like Tottenham, that's how they play. They they play that counter attacking football and all that. Like you know, you, you know, when you've got Harry Kane and all that, they've always got a chance and all that. Like you know, um, I, I thought that they, you know, they were fortunate against West Ham yesterday. Like you know, if Arsenal played like Tottenham did yesterday, there'd be a lot of moaning going on on Twitter and everything like that because I thought they were poor, but. They're poor and they've got a result out of it, like you know, and that's why I think it's important now that we go to one of the big guns now and get that same sort of result. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and and people would be lovely, wouldn't it? Be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah, if if Arsenal were to go there and win, that would really be you know like six out of six, and then people would go, "Oh, hold on a minute, that's that's a good thing." Uh, my mate Steve, who I'm on holiday with at the moment, he made a great point and said, like, you know, forget about Man City. I think we're six, five, six points clear of fourth at the moment. And that's the objective, top four. So, you know, while we keep winning games, that that's that's great. But what the bigger picture is, that's keeping us in the in the hunt for the top four. So, I, I think Sunday is a is a massive game. Um, transfer window for me. I don't know what you're giving it. I, I'm giving it a six. I, yeah, you know, same. Um, I, I, and that's I, only because Lee, we've signed. J if if we hadn't signed Jesus, I'd give it a three. I think. You know yeah, I've been really shambles, so, the, one, the one thing yeah. I would, one thing I would say about it all, like, is that um, <laughs> Edu and, and I are getting a lot of credit for giving away players. I don't see how they can, you know. I mean, I can do that. I can go and give away players. You know what I mean? Like, it's been. I tell you what, I've been. Yeah, I, I said, I've been I said impressed this, that they got twenty five million said, for Bellerin. I've been very impressed. You know what I mean? But uh, there you go. I so. said this, mate. People say it's it's really harsh way to look at things, but. We've given away so many players, man, and we terminated contracts. And people say we had to do it. Yeah, we did. But don't praise people for just cancelling contracts because that ain't. There's nothing genius about that, mate. There's nothing genius about saying Mustafi, I'm going to cancel your contract. Oh, Mikel, how have you done it? Come on, man. Anyone could have done this. Get rid of players that aren't good enough. Come on, man. Let's not give people credit for cancelling contracts and not getting any money for people like Aubameyang who we say to Barcelona, I tell you what, we'll pay you seven million to take him and then we'll go to Chelsea for 15 million or whatever it was. You know, it's been a madness. It's been a madness. Yeah. Better in again, he's gone. Man, oh, we'll just terminate. God, just give him away. Enough. We don't want any money. Just you go. It's just bizarre, mate. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand it, but, you know, there's a lot of fan base that think it's genius at work. Um, I don't, you know, Douglas Lewis and Tielemans have said, uh, Villa and, and uh, Leicester have said, nah, they got one, we'll just, we'll, we'll just, you know, if you want to give us 40, 40 million or 20 million, they can go, otherwise we're going to keep them and play them. We're, we're just giving them away. We just say, do what you want. It's just very bizarre. And I understand with Bellerin that he wasn't in the plans and he was a Wenger player and he was on 125k a week, but I think we need to be a bit, a bit realistic with what we've done with some of these players, man. We've got pittance yeah. for them. Absolute pittance. So yeah. it is a shame. It is a shame, mate. I can't lie. Um, it really is a shame. I've got to read out a few super chats just quickly before we do go, Lee. Okay. Um, we've got uh Chaitanya, top man. I can't put them up on screen because they've gone really sorry, but I haven't got control tonight and Dave's computer crashed. Uh so we've got Chaitanya who said um six out of ten transfer windows, still short in midfield and attack. 
This could cost us a season if we're active in January. Why let go of Maitland Niles on the last day of the season? Yeah, I totally agree with you. We've done it in January. We've done it in January. Done in January as well. It's very bizarre. They clearly don't like Maitland Niles, do they? Um, as Claude once said, for everyone else, it's the transfer deadline day, but for Arsenal fans, it's Thursday. I said that at the top of the, uh, win, uh, yeah. top of the show. Uh, what free agents are available, says Jamie Drummer? Uh, Ross Barkley, dear Lord. No, let's uh, not even go there. He is available, um, though, Ross Barkley. He, he is, Barkley I know, but let's just not go there. Let's not go there. Trevor Keaton has said we needed a centre midfielder that was defensive, striker and a winger at the very least. We started so strong and I feel as if we've just shot ourselves in the foot. We could have really pushed top two or three this year, but we've left it too late. And Luke Morrison finally has said we should have already addressed the issues of getting a defensive midfielder and a centre midfielder, leaving it till deadline day is incompetence. 23 players to last the season. If this costs us top four, then Arteta and Edu must be sacked. And I don't think that's a negative look on things. I really don't. People say it's too negative. We're top of the league. It's five games in. Give him some time. If we don't get in the Champions League or win that Europa League, Arteta and Edu's job is on the line. I'm sorry. And if it's not on the line, then Stan Kroenke will be looked at. And this transfer window has then again put everybody in the downer again. Because we needed them cut the players that really could have put us lift us on. You know, we had a great start, fantastic start of the season. Never uh, enjoyed watching Arsenal for so long, Lee. Honestly, yeah. mate, home and away, I've been buzzing to go. I've been looking forward to it. And straight yeah. away, it's like, yeah, we're beating Villa. Oh, we've got no one, mate. This ain't going to last now. It's like that fear. This ain't going to last. We've seen this before. We saw it in January. We're Laconga already in, in the midfield and we're not, not feeling confident with it. All that kind of stuff. And it's like, oh, we didn't want to see this. And it's, and it's not moaning, Dan, you know what I mean? People are saying, oh, I've just been looking through Twitter, stop moaning and all that, like, you know what I mean? The same people that were wanting Wenger out. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? All Makes of a sudden, sense, they're, they're, they're saying, get behind the team and all that, like, you know what I mean? The same people were, were, were on protest, walking, they're all giving it a go, do this and do that, be like that. They was all on protest, trying to get Arsene Wenger out, like, you know what I mean? So, uh, it, it's very, very much... Uh, um, you know, hypocritical some of these these fans on Twitter and all that like, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, I can see why Arsenal fans wanna support and everything and all that like, but I can see why a lot of Arsenal fans have got the ump about what's gone on at this moment in time. I, I am buzzing with the Arsenal and what they're playing and I and I, I all like the worry for me and why I'm moaning is because I can see it all crashing down. That's why I'm upset. Like, nothing about anything else on agendas or whatever. I see Arsenal in a really good place and I can see it crumbling because we've not done their bits properly in the transfer window. That's all it is for me, like, you know what I mean? But ultimately, look, we're, we're, we're where we are. And, and, and at the end of the day, now, uh, me and you have said it all along, Dan. No more excuses. There's no more excuses now, like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't want to hear about we ain't got a midfield player. You've decided that, that um, you know, that... Um, you didn't need one. You knew that. You knew that um, uh, that party was going to break down. You know what I mean? Like uh, you know that. You knew that. So deal with it. Like you know what I mean? So if your car keeps breaking down, Dan, like what do you do? You replace it. You replace it. You know what I mean? Or you or 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 you keep moaning about it because it's because it keeps breaking down and keep repairing it and keep going again. So you do like that's what it's like. So I've got no, they've got no, no excuses no more. Listen, we're still in a fantastic place. We're top of the league, five wins out of five. Let's make mm. it six against Manchester United, and let's forget about this transfer window now. It's done and dusted. We can't do nothing about it now. It's done. We just got to get behind the team, as you say, right? And um, and it's been a bloody pleasure following the Arsenal about this moment. So I've watched the the last two games over here on TV, and. Um, I I've just oh, I wish I was there. Like I'm, really, I'm, I'm, I'm missing it. Like you know what I mean. So uh, I'm really looking forward to 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 uh, getting to watch the Arsenal again back home. Like you know, hundred percent, mate. Um, there we have it, people. Both me and Lee have given a six out of ten for the transfer window. Let us know in the comments what you would rate Arsenal's transfer window as what we will be positive about those the way we're playing at the moment it's been fantastic to watch individually and as a team we're looking really good top of the league five wins um out of five we're going into the sixth game at old trafford we've got everything crossed that we can take three points some are saying they take the point we got to be going in there wanting to win i look at this situation right now and think let's be positive and let's go for it we're all worried we're all concerned we're all feared that fearful that perhaps the injuries might come and we might be a little bit short but we have to get behind the team 
get behind what's going on at the moment and be happy that we're top of the league um, and really go for it this season. Um, Lee, absolute pleasure, mate. I can't wait for you to come back, mate. I've missed you. And I can't no wait to worries. see you football, mate. And, uh, but enjoy the rest of your holiday, bro. I know you've got a few days okay. left out there. And I'll so. see you next week, like, yeah. Cheers, we will see you next week. Absolutely, mate. Guys, take it easy. Thing, sorry, oh, go on, Lee. Just go one on, thing, Lee. just say sorry about, like, if we've not been at the... Dave's computer's gone down. I'm, of course, like, over here in, in, in Turkey, so I can't get the access to it. Dan ain't got the access to it. So it's been a little bit, so we haven't been out to do uh, our normal stuff today. But we're, we're trying to get done for maybe on Monday, because I think, like, you're in Manchester, come come back till Monday, didn't you? So we're at, we'll do a show Monday instead. Just Saturday. Monday Sorry. evening. Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. All good. Thank you all so much for being there, guys. But smash a like on the video for us. Subscribe to the channel if you can. Um, and we will see you Monday evening, hopefully, to discuss Arsenal with three points at Old Trafford. Take care and up the Arsenal, guys. <laughs>